Hello, my name is Susanna McDonald, um, and I am a Boston-based printmaker and designer, and I am here to share with you why I absolutely love printing on fabric. Um, there's just something magical about printing on fabric, and it's so great that we've got these inks from Speedball that uh, work beautifully and print beautifully, and today I'm going to give you uh, a quick overview and tutorial about how you too can print on fabric. Anyone can do this. Um, I've taught this uh, to absolute beginners. I've done it with my young son, uh, and it's really just a fun way to create uh, your own fabric items. You can start by, you know, simply creating your own piece of fabric. If you've gone to the fabric store and you don't quite see what you like, uh, you can make your own. It's washable, it's dryable, uh, and good for everyday use. You can use it to create your own projects and uh, storage options. You can design and create your own tea towels, if you like, for gifts, for friends. And um, one of the most fun things to do that I love is to do t-shirts and sweatshirts. Um, and this is actually a wonderful way if to do sort of a low cost uh, print it yourself t-shirt with groups of friends or for teams back when we can, when we can have those things again. Um, so uh, just a wonderful pastime. Uh, I'm going to get started and let you know uh, what materials you'll need. First, you'll need to make your design. Um, I like to work in a sketchbook, and today it's just a regular old sketchbook that I've also printed. Um, you can use the, the Speedwell Fabric Block Printing Ink on paper too, and it works wonderfully uh, on these moleskin sketchbooks that I love. So um, I'm going to start with this design. Um, so I've designed this with pen and paper. If you are uh, more uh, inclined to work on computer, you could certainly do that. Um, and if you're like not confident about your drawing ability, that's fine. You can do it too. Um, as long as you don't plan on selling it, you can grab it in, uh, an image off the internet and uh, print it out and trace it and use it uh, to experiment with um, in uh, your printing adventures. And as we, um, and as we do this, I'm gonna pu put up a little, um, uh, I wanna put up a little Q and A box. Okay, sorry. Um, you can uh, ask questions as we go and I will do my best to answer them. Um, so we need our drawing. Um, we are going to need something to carve into. And uh, you can carve into all kinds of things. You can carve into linoleum. Um, but what I really love for block printing is Speedball Speedy Carve. This is a soft rubbery carving matrix um, that allows for really nice detail. And it's really nice for fabric because you get very nice contact with your fabric. That's sort of the difference between printing on fabric and paper um, is that uh, if you're not using a press and you're printing by hand, you really need to be able to push into your fabric and uh, the Speedy Carve is great for that. You can use regular linoleum. It's not gonna stand up over time. You can carve beautiful details into regular linoleum and you can use it to print on fabric, but um, don't get too ambitious with carving because after a while um, of printing and carving, it will start to crack and, um, and uh, break apart, which I found out the hard way after making uh, many a complex design on linoleum. So uh, I highly recommend uh, Speedball Speed Carve. It's worth a bit of extra money. It comes in a lot of different sizes. So if you're like, I don't know, and you just wanna try it out, you can get this little itty bitty three by four size. I'd say that the four by six is uh, a great size to uh, sort of start off with and dip your toe in. You could make, you know, like a little square design and have a little bit left over for a stamp or make a slightly larger one. And then once you really get bit by the bug, you can get uh, even larger sizes. This is sort of a medium one. They make even bigger ones as well. So um, you will need that. You will also need something to carve with and Speedball makes a great all-purpose carving tool. Um, it comes with the handle and then inside 
you have uh, some extra blades of different profiles, which I'll show you more about in detail later, but you can basically carve just about anything with this one simple tool. Um, and uh, that's a, it's a fantastic place to start. It has everything you need when you're starting out. Um, and then most importantly, the ink. We wanna make sure we get Speedball Fabric Block Printing ink. This is this ink is basically one of a kind. Um, it uh, it is permanent on fabric. You do not have to heat set it, and it's designed for block printing. Um, a common mistake I see is people get screen printing ink, and it is possible to uh, block print with screen printing ink, but it's a lot harder to control the results. There there are plenty of artists who are really wonderful and uh, skilled at doing it, but it's a definite learning curve. So I would say that um, you should start off with this. Um, it cures to permanence after seven days. All you have to do is just let it dry overnight. It'll be dry either overnight or if it's damp where you are, maybe like a, within 24 hours. And then all you have to do to make it permanent is not wash it, which is awesome because you don't have to do anything. You just have to wait and it'll be permanent. And then you can machine wash it on cool. You can put it in the dryer and it, it'll be uh, permanent. And um, and that's it. It's, 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 it's very easy. So it comes, there's either a, like a small sample kit. There's uh, the two and a half ounce tubes. And again, if you're getting the big speedy carb because you're really into it, get the big tubes because these are more economical. And fabric does use more ink than paper because uh, the fabric absorbs it. So you need to use a little bit more ink than you would on paper. Um, to print, you're gonna need a soft rubber brayer. It's very important to get the soft one. Um, don't make the same mistake I did while teaching a class of 20 the first for the first time and giving them a hard rubber brayer to roll out ink with. And they're like, why doesn't this work? It, it doesn't work. Uh, you need the soft one. The soft is to roll out ink with. Uh, I like the hard to put pressure on with, but uh, it, it, it's not designed to, to uh, soak up the ink. So this is for, um, this is for rolling out your ink. Um, you can use anything to roll out your ink that is smooth and flat. Uh, Speedball has a bench hook that you can use, but a piece of plexiglass works. Um, uh, you could take a piece of plate glass from a frame in a mirror and tape the edges so you don't cut yourself and you could roll it out on that. Um, you can be creative there. Even like a solo uh, plastic plate, those kinds with the flat bottoms, you could roll out ink on, on that or on one of those disposable pallets, those those tear off pallets, that's, you can roll out ink on that, that as well. So you can be quite creative uh, when it comes to that. Having a palette knife around also helps too if you wanna mix some colors. Um, and then the next thing you'll need is a piece of fabric to print on. Um, I have mine here. I'm gonna print on a small piece of silk uh, scrap that I just have hanging around. Um, another important thing to do is to pre-wash your fabrics. That is really, really important for the ink to stink. <laughs> to stick, pardon me. Um, the fabric companies use something called sizing, uh, and that is to sort of maintain a crisp, nice look to the fabric while it's you know in transit and, and on display. Uh, but it's almost sort of like spray starch. It's, it's, it sits on the top of the fabric, and if you print on that, it doesn't allow the ink to adhere. And so for that reason, you need to pre-wash your fabrics. Um, so just wash them, dry them, you know, line dryer, tumble dry, doesn't matter, but just wash them before you print them. It also helps like if you're doing sewing projects, you usually want to pre-wash your fabric so that you've made sure they're sh shrunk as well, but that's less important. It's more important just to get that sizing out before you print it. So just remember if it's something brand new to throw it in the wash first. Um, so the next thing you have to do is um, you have to get your design onto your block. I have mine ready to go and pre-carve so you don't have to sit and watch me carving the entire thing, but I will give you uh, a little bit of, a, of some ideas of uh, different ways to get your uh, design onto your block. Uh, as I showed you before, I have, I have my design in my sketchbook. Um, and so that makes it a little bit different, difficult to get it onto the block, but there, I'll show you, I'll show you two easy ways. Um, we're just gonna make pretend that this is a pencil version 
uh, of my design. So what you could do is you could draw your design in just a regular number two pencil, uh, just making sure to really color in and, um, and uh, darken in nicely uh, anything you want to show up on your block. I always recommend that you draw your design as you want it to print and that way it helps you to carve. Um, it's really important to make sure that however you transfer it, you tran do a good job and that you can really see your design because you cannot carve what you can't see. If you can't see it, if it's blurry, if it's smudged, you're not gonna be able to carve it um, and get and line up your carving tool. So I'm gonna do, I'm going to show you um, how I would transfer this design. So I'm gonna unwrap this fella. And later, I'm going to reveal to you, there's something magical about this, uh, about this little insert that comes with the speedy carve. But I'm gonna show you the really simple way first. So we're just gonna pretend together that this is a pencil drawing of my design. It is not, it is a photocopy, but um, this took me a long time to draw. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and this is just an example. And, and also, since I already have the block, I don't wanna, make another version and waste this precious speedy carve, which I love so much. So what you would do is if this were your pencil drawing, you would just cut it out and you would very carefully decide where on your speedy carve you would like it to go. Um, I try not to waste, but sometimes the, some of the edges uh, are sloped, so I try and stay away from those. You could even actually, you could do something like that in this case. Um, and I always like to have a little bit of space around about a quarter of an inch around my design. So I make sure to account for that. And what you would do is you would just take it and set it down very carefully because you don't want to move it once it's on there because it really will take in the pencil. And you just can take some scotch tape and you can tape it down. I usually do it like in four spots just because you really want it to stay still. And then you can use either the back of your carving tool and rub, or if you don't happen to have this carving tool, you could use like the handle of your scissors. You could use a wooden spoon. And basically you would just peek underneath, check to make sure it's transferred and, um, and you should see your image very clearly on that. That is the most simple way to transfer an image and it doesn't take anything fancy. However, on the back, there are some instructions on here about how to transfer a printout using an iron. Um, I have a full tutorial about this on Speedball's YouTube channel. On Speedball's Instagram, though, you have to scroll far down because I did it last March. So you've got to, you know, kind of go down to last year to find it. Uh, it's also on my um, on my uh, Instagram, which is Lino Cave Prints. I have it there. So, so you can see a full on tutorial of exactly how to do that. But what I do is I take a photocopy on my laser jet printer um, and then I take a warm iron and just iron it on. Um, you don't want it hot because it'll melt it. Um, and you can also do it with an inkjet. I find more people have success with the laser jet printer um, and you can iron it on. And the beauty of that is it does not smear. I have it permanently on here. I'm rubbing my hands across it and it's not going anywhere. And that's great for the complex designs that I like to make. Um, and uh, so I really, really love that method. With a pencil method, it works fine, but it will smudge a little bit if you're not careful. So you've gotta be really, really careful while you're uh, working um, to not smear your design. Because as I said before, you can't carve what you can't see. Um, so next, um, we have our carving tool. Um, this carving tool, as I showed you, has different blades in the handle. And each of the blades has a different profile. Right now I have the teeny, teeny 
tiny little blade, the number one blade. Uh, and all of the blades are labeled on the back. So uh, on the back of each blade, there it's probably too small to show you, but um, there is a number right here at the middle. And then where it says speedball, that's the part that you insert into the chuck assembly. So you can change out your blades. The number one is for very small and fine things, uh, of which I do have on this, um, on this design. So if I want to do a fine little line, um, I'm going to start with a number one. I always like to do, I always like to go around my fine lines first. And then, um, when it's time to carve bigger areas, I switch and, um, put a bigger blade on. So, uh, the way that you hold this is not how you hold a pencil, you know, a pencil, we hold like this and we put our hand down on the paper. And because these tools are actually sharp, that's, a bit of a disaster. The way I like to hold my carving tool is with my hand over it and my finger close to the uh, tip of the blade because that allows you a lot of control. Um, and you can really have good control uh, the more you are choked up. Um, uh, me using a sports analogy is ridiculous because, well, if you've ever seen me play a sport, it's just horrifying. Um, but I do like to have this tool be an extension of my hand. So that's how I hold it. The other reason why I hold it overhand like this is if you hold it like this, it's very much at an angle from your, from your carving material. So like that's going to be the closest angle you can get. And you don't have a whole lot of control and you risk the uh, blades going beneath the surface of the carving matrix. So I like to have it like this because I can have it really, really at a shallow angle to carve. And that's, um, that's why I choose this way of holding on to it. Um, so I always start with my finest little parts first and you, you don't want to position your hands like if you're writing. When we write, we hold down our paper like this and we have our hands sort of like that or the opposite if you're left-handed. In this case, you actually want to reverse that. You want to carve away from anything that might potentially bleed. You do not want to slip and ha jam this bad boy into your finger because that's really just not going to feel good at all. So, um, so what you want to do is you just want to go slow and steady along your lines and lift out when it's time to lift out. And I always keep a little a little dish of my carving scraps because I don't like to make a mess, but everybody's different. Everybody works differently. That's just what I recommend. Um, so you'd have to carve out anything that you don't want to print, which is why I suggested um, drawing your design as you want it to print. That way, whatever the, I've drawn it the way I want it to print. So whatever is gonna print is the dark black part. Uh, and what I don't wanna print, I know I have to carve away. Um, it's easier if you make all those decisions on paper, uh, as opposed to trying to like, be like, oh goodness, and think about it when you're carving. And then once you carve away the something and you're like, wait a minute, that, I didn't mean to do that there's no way really to put it back. So uh, I highly recommend um, making all of those decisions on your paper where you can have your friend the eraser <laughs> sort all of those issues out for you. And then once you've figured it out, um, you can transfer it onto your block and carve it. Uh, the other thing to think about is if you're using lettering, you need the letters or whatever image you have to be reversed on the block. If you draw it on paper first, you can draw it forward. And then when you transfer it, it automatically reverses it for you. So that, um, so that you don't really have to think about that step if you always do it on paper and either transfer it with the iron on method or transfer it with the pencil method. Um, whichever way you transfer it, um, uh, as long as you're transferring it, you will sort out that reversing uh, issue. So um, so I always start with my finest parts first, and then I'd switch to the number two blade. I think that the number two blade is a really, really versatile blade in the speedball tool kit. Um, and I know this is, it's sort of the way the camera is, it's a little bit small, but I just wanted to show you a couple of little tips for carving. 
Again, have your hand behind your carving tool, hold with the overhand grip, start at an angle, level it out and push slowly and steadily forward and lift out. I've, I've blackened this with a little bit of a stamp pad um, just so you can see it a little bit better because if I didn't, uh, you definitely wouldn't be able to see it on camera. The other tip I wanted to give you is carving curves and circles. That's something that people have a lot of problem with is they're like, oh, I can't do these circles. And they are hard to carve, but they're not impossible. The, the key is not to try to create the curve with your hand because, you know, your arm only moves in a certain direction and it's not in a complete circle. <laughs> so, uh, and even if you tried to do a half carve using just your arm, it really wouldn't work. What you wanna do is you wanna set your knife down and you want to just turn your block. And you don't even need to move your knife, you just turn the block depending on the size of circle you want. Slowly and smoothly, no rushing here, very carefully, and then you can carve a nice circle and depending on how big you want it. Um, that's how you can carve it. And then finally, there's like the number five tool and this will take out a lot of material. So if you carve with this, if you have like a big space, use this guy toward the end. Once you've done all your details, then you can use this big C-shaped gouge to really get rid of most of the material. So um, I won't uh, bore you too, too much with a lot, a lot of carving because we have to get on to the fun part, which is printing. Once you've had have your block carved, which I have a version of this block already carved, and I've also, I've left the um, edges on um, just for stability while you're carving to have that edge really helps. But then at the end, you can take uh, an XL knife uh, and I use my trusty junky plastic ruler. I don't use don't use a nice ruler except because um because the exacto knife can cut through it so um so you can cut it out flush with the edges of your design uh should you desire and so let me get this out of my way And I'm gonna print in um, one of my favorite colors, pardon me. Grab one thing. I love to mix custom colors, but um, the Speedball inks come in so many great colors. And one of my favorites is the magenta, another one of just random. Uh, another favorite is turquoise is really, really beautiful. Um, they're all great, but those are just two ones that are wonderful right outside, uh, you know, right out of the gate. There's no need to think about it. They're going to look fantastic. You're wondering, why do I have this towel that's like a mishmash of all these designs? Um, it is because this is my towel that I use. I have a bunch of these for the first impression of my print. So you never wanna print your first um, bit of printing uh, on the thing you wanna print. So you wanna put it on a scrap towel. Uh, scrap paper works, it doesn't work quite as well, um, but it does work. Um, but I recommend, you know, an old t-shirt, anything. I'm sure everybody's got like a piece of clothing uh, or just, you know, literally anything. It's just to get rid of the fabric. So the ink on the fabric, and that's all it's for. And that's all I use this for. So I've laid out uh, a little bead of ink at the top of my, um, I'm just gonna show you how I pull it down at the top of my plexi. Um, and this is how I distribute the ink because you wanna use your soft rubber brayer first to roll out the ink and then we're gonna roll it onto the, um, onto the, onto my carved block. So I usually, myself, I put a little bead at the, a bead at the top um, and I just dip my brayer in and roll first, just 
in one direction, not back and forth. And then I spread it. And if you can hear, you kind of get this nice sort of zippy sound. I hope you all can hear it. Um, if you don't get that zippy sound and it sounds kind of dry, then that means that you don't have um, enough ink. Conversely, if you take too much ink, all of a sudden that sound completely disappears and you get like, you see those streaks of ink? That means you've got too much ink. So that's really easy to fix. All you have to do is just scrape some back to the top with your palette knife and redistribute it and you can hear that nice sound. And you want it to be kind of like a nice, even, almost glittery texture. So let's see if I can show that to the camera and see if you can see that it's glittery. So our next course of action is to roll it and apply it onto the block. So I've got my nice sound and then I just want to roll the brayer over it in all directions. and do multiple thin layers. And each time, just grab a little smidge more ink from the top. The difference between printing fabric and paper is that you need a lot more ink. The fabric absorbs it. And every fabric's different, kind of like every paper is different. I all like you say that's like one of the frustrating things about printing on fabric. Um, but, uh, but every paper is different too. But for fabric, you just, you need a lot more ink than you think. I'm printing on silk, which I actually don't need quite as much ink and quite as much pressure as some other uh, rougher materials. Like I, the, my sample, my discharge cloth here is, um, is flower sack cloth. And that is not quite as forgiving as silk. Um, silk's a bit easier, but, but uh, they're all different, so. I, I even teach a workshop about it and about all the different fabrics and how to get your, the same results. So afterward, what I do is I just check my block. I look at it and I say like, ooh, is this shiny? Can I, have I gotten ink everywhere? Um, is it glittery throughout? Do I have enough? If it looks dry, that probably means that it is. And so now I'm printing it onto my discharge cloth because remember, the first impression will always be more faint. Um, so we don't want that. Now you can press down with two things. You can press down with your hands, first of all. These, are, these work perfectly fine, but if you're doing a lot of these, like really pushing down hard is not good body mechanics, and it's gonna be really hard on your wrists. So I would not recommend that. You can use a Speedball Baron um, that is designed for this exact purpose, just to push with. Um, but I also like the Speedball Hard Brayer. Uh, I really like pushing down with that. I think that's just, that's just my preference. I think it's like the first thing I had on hand to, to do it with. So, um, so that's, it's just, it's just become my preference. I, I, I like it. So there we go. It's printed on the discharge cloth. It's fine, but it's not that dark. So that just goes away. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you was that, especially with my patterns, um, to register them, I always put a this side up. Or if you have something that is asymmetrical, but it's on a symmetrically shaped block and you're printing, once you flip it over, you can't see your design anymore. So you've got to give yourself a little bit of information for while you're, while you can't see it. Then uh, this one, I even put a little uh, X, Y axis so that I can, I can really line these up well. Um, so um, as I print here, if people have questions, um, please type them into the chat and I'm happy to answer any of them as I go, because uh, once I get started printing here, it'll be 
a little bit repetitive. Um, but I just, you know, I want to, if people want to ask something, uh, I definitely want to be able to answer it. So again, I'm going to draw more ink down. Um, for each inking, spread it out nicely. I'm listening for that nice, happy printmaking sound. It's kind of zippy, kind of staticky. And then rolling multiple thin layers of ink. And again, more ink than you would imagine. Um, making sure that I cover everywhere. Doing one final coat. Again, you don't need quite as much ink. Let's see if I can show you the texture of that. And you see how it's kind of glittery. It looks like it's glittering. And I have my arrow on the back. And usually I like stand up and print and I really wanna make sure that I get my block where I want it. More important on the subsequent ones, like and perhaps on this one, if I were printing a bigger piece of fabric, I might have, you know, marked some of it out with a fabric marker or a ruler or figured out some way that I could line it up so that it would stay straight. Um, and then you want to push. You want to push down. Again, I like the hard rubber brayer, but you could use um, the Baron if you like. Make sure you get really good pressure. This is a this is a physical process. It's not. Um, you know, you really got to push hard on it because you want it to absorb into that fabric. You want to get every bit of ink that you rolled on there into that fabric. It's not going to do any good going back, coming back on the block. So make sure you go get every bit of it. Um, you could check, but once you put it down, you don't want to shift it. You might be able to peel up and look at it. I don't do that that often, but um, I just try and get it right the first time. Oops, I should have peeled it the other way. Sorry, I did my peel reveal the wrong direction. I'm gonna do the next one and then I'll, I'll make it so that you all can see it. I'm sorry about that. Um, and I'm just gonna use a little scrap of paper so that I don't get it on my table. Um, the other thing I didn't talk about was that it is nice to have a padded surface underneath your printmaking. Um, uh, when you're printing on fabric because it almost sort of acts like a press felt um, on your press bed that you'd have on a printing press. But again, as I described that the speedy car is really soft, it's kind of nice to have a padded surface. I'm working on like four layers of upholstery fabric. Uh, I have a printing table behind me that is like maybe 12 or 15 layers of old sheets. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, just it can't have a texture because any texture that's behind the fabric will show. So you want it to be smooth, whatever it is. You could use an old fleece uh, or wool blanket. Um, you could, again, use multiple layers of sheets. You just don't want any creases, wrinkles, or folds underneath it because those will come through in the printing. So you just want to make sure it's all nice and smooth. Uh, an old towel is fine as long as like whatever you're printing isn't going to interfere with any of the seams or like ribbing on it. And as long as the towel is not like the textured kind that has like patterns in it or anything like that, uh, just like a plain terry cloth towel would, would work too. Um, and then the other thing I forgot to tell you, most important printmaking tool, your, something to clean your fingers with. I just use a damp rag. You could use a baby wipe, you could use a damp paper towel, but um, especially if you're doing multiples, you wanna keep your printmaking area and your fingers really clean because if you don't, eventually you won't be able to stop yourself from getting fingerprints all over the place. Um, and after all the hard work you did, designing, carving, um, and then printing, and the, like you don't wanna ruin with fingerprints. So. That's that's no fun. And actually, this one's gonna show better on camera. I want you all to be able to see it. So I'm gonna print another one. So again, drawing a little bit more ink down with each pass, making sure that you're generous with it, getting it on every part of your block. Now 
listening for that nice staticky sound, looking for that glittery texture, using more ink than you think. And then making sure that you line it up nicely, making sure that your hands are clean before you touch anything else because Hey, we've learned all about hand washing <laughs> this past year. Um, and it works, it goes the same for ink too. And with this ink, this ink is oil-based but water miscible. That means that it dissolves in water. So a damp rag does just plain water will take this off your fingers. Um, so that's all you need. So remember to push nice and hard. Um, for I wouldn't necessarily do this as much on silk, but on a fabric that's more rough in texture or that's more absorbent, I'd even hit. I'd never do that on paper because on paper it would just smear, but the fabric really holds it. So you don't have to worry too much about that. And there we go. That's nice. Maybe I'll print one more. Um, the other thing that's great about this ink is that it just, you can use it at home, cleans up with soap and water, um, and it's got a little bit of an oily smell to it, but I actually kind of like it. I think it smells good. My father ran a printing press. Uh, that was what he did. Uh, he ran offset presses and uh, he would be, come home like soaked in oil-based ink and solvents. And my mom would make him like put his work clothes outside because they, she just was like, this is not coming in the bedroom. So, cause they were really smelly. So I might have a slight, like almost nostalgic, uh, love of of what ink smells like but this is uh this is really great because it's safe to use at home i've been i use it at home i you know let my son use it with supervision um because <laughs> it also is permanent um i think you if like it was still wet you might be able to kind of wash it out but i don't know all is safe to assume that it's going to be permanent um so here's one more print. Again, lots of pressure. Make sure you really get every part. Because sometimes you'll see, like if you don't get every part, you're like, ah, I didn't push there. But also give yourself a little bit of a uh, grace too because um block printing is not like screen printing you're not gonna like this shirt is screen printed that says speedball it's gonna look perfect because it's screen printed block printed you get a little bit more variation but that's part of the look and that's part of what makes it special and that's part of what makes it handmade so um you know each one is done by hand and um they're all a little bit different uh so to clean this up I always use just scrap paper, junk mail, whatever you have around. And um, what I do is I, I um, just scrape. This is safe to go down your sink, but it's always best, like especially with oily stuff, just like when you're cleaning up after dinner and stuff, you're not going to dump bacon grease down your sink. I don't, you don't need to put any extra of this down your sink than you need to. I just put it in a piece of paper and throughout the excess and then all I do is I just take all my materials down and I fill up my kitchen sink uh, in hot soapy water. If you have like a white marble sink or something, you might want to put it in a basin instead, but I have a nice soapstone sink or if you have you know, a, a stainless steel sink, that's like perfect. Um, just fill it up, hot soapy water, dish soap, um, and then an old toothbrush is great to like clean off, um, you know, all the areas in your block where ink might collect and, um, you can scrub off your brayer too with that, get that all nice and clean and dry and then just stand it up to dry. Um, you could leave this sitting for about like 
an hour or two, but once you start getting past that, the longer you wait, the harder it is to clean. So I would not recommend um, letting it go too long. It literally takes, I can clean this up in three minutes. It's, it's the easiest ever. Um, so, um, and if you leave it overnight, then it's sort of like sayonara. <laughs> it's, it's on there. It'll cure just like it cures on the fabric. It'll cure on there. So don't leave it lying around. Definitely. It's easier just to get it cleaned up uh, right away. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, if you're interested in uh, buying any of these products at the store, you can use code Susanna at checkout for 30% off, which is awesome. Like get yourself a nice big piece of Speedy Carve and a big tube of ink and some little tubes of ink and uh, have fun printing on fabric. This is like, I've had a, I mean, this has kept me sane uh, for all this uh, quarantine and uh, staying at home and I've taught it. I teach a lot. You can look on my website, lineofcave.com. I teach uh, a lot of different lessons uh, and classes about block, pr block printing on Zoom. Um, and that has really, really helped to have something to do and, uh, and just stay home and stay safe and have fun. And you, you can make some stuff and mail some presents to your friends who you miss or your family. So, um, I appreciate, uh, very much you joining me for this demo. Uh, it was a lot of fun and happy printing everybody. Thank you so much.